Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. Today I'm working on the second prototype for the bass clarinet in G. Now here's an interesting question. How do you install pads on an instrument with plastic keys? Traditionally, what you would do to install pads on an instrument is you would heat the pad cup up and you would float the pads in with either shellac or hot melt glue. So the idea would be that you'd place the glue on the back of the pad, put it in the pad cup, and then you would float it, which means you would adjust how the pad sits so that when it touches that tone hole, it's perfectly level. So all sides of the pad touch at the same time, and that'll give you a nice good seal. But this presents a problem. So um, in order to float a pad properly, the pad cup itself needs to be fairly hot. Now, obviously with 3D printed plastic key work, this is gonna be a problem because if you were to try to heat this up with a torch, uh, there's a good chance it would just melt. So traditional pads wouldn't work. Now on the first prototype, what I did was I had these neoprene foam pads. As you can see, they're just flat sheets that just sit um, on the key. They're just uh, glued on with contact cement and then they seal against the tone hole. And those actually worked pretty well. So I tried to design the instrument so that the, um, the pads would be level uh, just by the design of the instrument. So uh, I designed everything for the exact thickness of neoprene that I was um, going to use. And so far, everything has been working pretty well. But the only place where I had some issues was on the larger tone holes. Uh, so these, obviously, they're pretty large. So the larger the tone hole, the more precise you have to be with how uh, level it is. So uh, for the tone hole for the right hand third finger in the uh, FC key, um, it, it's still sealed fairly well, but you could tell with the leak light there was a little bit of unevenness um, with the neoprene pads. So for these two pads and the second prototype, I wanted to try something a little different. So what I have are these. So these are Music Medic's newest pad, their Neopad. So these things are pretty cool. So from the front, they look pretty much like a traditional pad. Uh, they got a little thing in the center of the resonator, but on the back, you can see they have this stud. And this stud allows it to, let me get that in focus, it allows it to pivot. So if I put that in the pad cup, you can see it, it can rock around. So that means that these pads are self-leveling. So I don't need to heat it up with a torch to level the pad. Um, it, it'll sort of just level by the action of pushing it against the tone hole. Uh, so as soon as I saw these, I knew that these would be perfect for 3D printed instruments, or I should say at least I think they'll be perfect for 3D printed instruments. Today I'm going to be testing them out and seeing uh, if this is really a good solution uh, for the problem I've been having. So what I did was I designed my key uh, for these pad cups. So, um, or sorry, for these pads, I should say. So this uh, pad cup is 28 millimeters internal diameter and the pad is 27.5. So they recommended a 0.5, um, well, so it'd be a 0.25 millimeter clearance on all sides. Uh, and that just gives the pad enough room to rock around. Um, so essentially I'm just gonna be installing them like I saw in the Music Medic video. So I'm just gonna be taking a dab of this uh, rubberized CA glue and I'm just gonna be putting it on that stud, and then I'm just gonna be plopping it in there, making sure it's center, and then that should be good to go. Um, so yeah, let's give it a try. So I think since this is a fresh bottle, yeah, I just need to cut off the tip. So let's just do that. Okay, yep, it's coming out. So now I got my pad cup. So I'm just gonna take, get a new camera. I take this glue, I'm just gonna put a decent amount, not too much. So it's a very gel-like glue. So now I'm just going to pop it in there and I'm just gonna quickly make sure that it's centered because I don't want it to be too close to one side or another because it won't have that like a uh, self-leveling ability. So I'm just gonna hold that for maybe a few seconds. Um, probably don't need to hold it right now. I'm just gonna let that sit. I'm just gonna put my CA glue away. And I'll probably store this um, in the refrigerator. That's a good tip uh, to keep your CA glue uh, lasting as long as possible. Store it in the refrigerator. Um, you can get it bottled to last for a good year or two that way. Okay, so I think this is now hardened. I can't really move it back and forth. And you can see it still uh, wobbles. 
or levels, I should say, um, as it's supposed to, um, or adjust, I guess. Uh, in any case, you can, you can see exactly how it's supposed to work. So when it's gonna push down, um, wherever it touches first on the, the tone hole is gonna push that up until the other side touches. Uh, so in theory, you should get a pretty level, um, pretty level pad. So uh, let's give this a go. So here's how my uh, here's how the springs on my keys work. By the way, I had some questions about this. So you can see they're just little coil springs. So you just kind of plop them in place. And it's a little bit tricky. Um, so you put it there, and then you got to make sure it matches to the little hole on the key itself. And then you just insert the little pin. So it's a pin like a lot of. Uh, you would see in a lot of uh, historical instruments or like even some uh, modern bassoons will have a pin like this. Um, so you don't like screw in the keys or anything. And the hardest part I've always found is getting into lined. There we go. And I just push it in and there we go. So now let's look at that pad. So you can see it's kind of tilted, but when I close it, it looks like it's working pretty good. But now for the, uh, the ultimate test. So let's turn off the lights and let's use my leak light and we'll see if we can see any leaks. And then uh, keep in mind, I also leveled the uh, tone hole before I did this. Uh, so the tone hole itself should be fairly level. So if, if we see any leaks, it'll be because of the pad. All right, lights off. Leak light is on so you can see. Okay, let's put that at a good angle. Looks pretty good. Yeah, just with a nice light touch, it uh, seems to seal pretty well. And you can see like when I start to close it, it um, you can see it starts to close on one side first, but then it levels and it closes across the entire pad. So yeah, I'm uh, quite impressed with these needle pads. I think this will work perfectly for what I want to do. And it worked exactly as expected, easy to install. Um, yeah, so uh, overall very pleased with this uh, new product for Music Medic. Um, just to clear uh, things, I'm not being sponsored by them or anything. Uh, I just happened to see their advertisement and thought this would be something worth trying. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty cool product and I'm excited to uh, use this on future projects. Right, so thanks everyone uh, for joining this video. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, thanks everyone.